We no longer live in a world where being involved in the Jewish community is a given for young adults today. For everybody, it's a choice. I'm a senior program officer at the Jim Joseph Foundation, and a lot of my work focuses on our grants to organizations that are doing peer-to-peer -peer education work in the Jewish community. From my own background, working on campus and working with young adults, I always found that although we were driving towards more events and more people at our events, what was really making a difference were the relationships that I was building with individuals or the relationships that they were building with other people who are coming to the events and programs. The question is, is there a way that we can build a model that will engage beyond the folks who would naturally think to connect with the Jewish community? What we have with peer-to-peer -peer engagement is this idea that instead of having each individual engage with a professional, what would it mean to train young people, young adults, who are excited and passionate about Jewish life to reach out to the people that they know and to bring them into the Judaism that they're creating for themselves. A wonderful model of this is Moisha House, where you take young adults who are thinking about living together anyway and want to create Jewish community for themselves. And what we end up getting is micro communities kind of built around these houses and around the individuals who live in these houses that can grow and can thrive. The model of Hillel's Campus Entrepreneurs Initiative is exploring what does it mean to really train people in this skill of engaging your peers. Another interesting example of this is with the Next Shabbat program. Birthright Next has said, how can we give alumni of the Birthright Israel experience the tools that they need to create the community they want to create? And through these micro grants, the folks at Birthright Next have managed to create hundreds, thousands of these Shabbat dinners happening in homes all around the country. The peer-to-peer -peer model also comes into play with the work that Repair the World is doing around sending young people on these incredible service learning trips and infusing Jewish content into that experience doing service in the community. What's remarkable about our investment in peer-to-peer -peer education is that for a relatively small amount of grant funds invested, we've managed to reach over 100,000 college students and young adults using this model. I really believe in this work because I feel that being a part of an intentional Jewish community that celebrates together and learns together has added meaning to my own life. And I consider it an honor to be able to work with organizations that are trying to create these kinds of experiences for other young adults that bring meaning. I grew up in the Bay Area. I had a Jewish upbringing, I had my bar mitzvah, I went on a teen trip to Israel and really found a connection and community. I wasn't planning on working in the Jewish community, I wanted to be involved in it but not work for it. I went over to a friend's house for dinner, it was actually four of the people from our Israel trip. They had a home that they were renting together, but when I asked them if they had any involvement in the Jewish community, they all said no. So I asked them if they would turn their home into a place that was more than just a place to eat and sleep, a place of real Jewish vibrancy and Jewish life. And they did a Shabbat dinner that next week, and 73 people came. That's really how Moshe House started. From that day on, we've gotten emails every week from people all over the world wanting to bring that kind of Jewish life into their home and into their communities. Our goal in Moshe House is to give people the opportunity to find the meaning for themselves in having a Jewish community and having a Jewish home in whatever way that works for them. I don't think we ever had plans for Moshe House to grow the way it has grown, but we haven't grown it. The programs have been successful because they're peer-to-peer -peer engagement. It's much more comfortable for someone who's 25 to invite another person who's 25 over for Shabbat dinner than it is for someone who's 45 to suggest to a 25-year-old what they should be doing for Shabbat. Young adults living in Moshe House already have a big network of Jewish community. They already have a place to make it happen. They're already wanting to engage more in meaningful Jewish life. And Moshe House creates a framework for this to happen consistently and find the importance of Judaism for their own self and for their community.
place where people come to see their friends and to see other members of the Jewish community. I'm in charge of the educational content here at the Hillel, and uh, I love working with this age group. I think that they're at a unique time in their lives, and they've got a lot of questions. I use the Torah as a way of framing those questions for them, as a way of giving them a sense that there are guideposts and there are questions that they're interested in that have been asked for thousands of years. Berkeley Hillel has two major things that we're trying to provide for Jewish students on campus. The first is a sense of home, and the second is a sense of meaning. The problem is that not everyone feels that it's their place. Not every Jewish student on campus sees this as their home. We are well acquainted with fundamental truth about students. That is, that they want their experiences to be largely with other students. One of our guiding principles is that we try and empower students to provide opportunities for other students. Campus Entrepreneurs is a group of students that I work with really closely and I have an ongoing conversation with them which is intended to enrich their own sense of Jewish identity and Jewish awareness and then those students are charged with going out and creating new forms of Jewish community all over the campus and we believe that they know better than we do what forms are going to speak to their friends, their peers, their networks. We really do believe that this notion of peer networking is essential to the work that we do. It's one of the tools that we have to help create Jewish life on campus. This notion of connecting them to Judaism doesn't happen as a sort of strategic plan for massing amounts of students, but it happens student by student, person by person, connection by connection. And it works. We're not only connecting people, but also enabling them to take ownership of their Jewish community. I feel that every young Jewish adult deserves the opportunity to either create or find a Jewish community that they can connect with. A lot of our participants are really eager to learn how to get back to Israel. Our goal is to help these alumni and their peers to have meaningful connections when they return home. We offer a diverse number of programs. The Next Shabbat program enables Tagleet Birthright alumni to host Shabbat meals in their home. They get the opportunity to invite people into their homes to create a tradition. What we're finding is that people are enjoying this experience and it's really providing them with a meaningful way to connect. One of our most successful programs is our cooking class series. We explore traditions through food and through conversation. They run the spectrum of themes from holiday cooking classes to Jews of the world. Another area that I think we excel in is providing our participants with opportunities to expand their Jewish knowledge and to grow Jewishly including programs like Topics on Tap, where we look at anything that you can think of and how it relates to Judaism and relates to us as young Jewish adults. Other programs include Israeli film, Hebrew classes, we do volunteer events, and it's really important that we are part of our community. Through offering small, welcoming environments for our participants, they go on a Jewish journey and really expand their knowledge and go through personal discovery through these experiences. And in turn, their Jewish identity grows. They become a larger part of not only the next community, but to the greater Jewish community as a whole. If students are never given an opportunity to be leaders, you can't expect them to show up as leaders later on. I was a journalist writing a story in Guatemala about backcountry climbing and camping and I was also doing some volunteer work and here I was supposed to be writing a story but I was finding far more meaning by digging toilets and building stoves and I was also volunteering at an orphanage. That to me was where the world kind of peeled back its skin and said this is the sweet spot, this is what I want to be engaged in in the world. 
Many of the big questions young folks are grappling with are, who am I? What do I want my life to look like? And what am I here to contribute in the world? In my own narrative, it wasn't until I encountered a rabbi who was able to translate those questions through a Jewish lens that I was able to see that Judaism had a tremendous amount to say about these major life questions. Repair the World connects college students and young adults with service and volunteer opportunities. We help grow the field, we help build the movement, and we help make the case for volunteer and service to be a major element of what it is to be an American Jew today. We help them understand that the Jewish narrative is among the narratives that grapple with some of these major questions. So I'm trying to create new and innovative ways for young adults and college students to engage in service and engage in their Judaism, and to see service through a Jewish lens, and to work with their peers and engage them in solving some of these global challenges or local challenges. When we succeed in engaging the next generation in service and volunteer work in real, authentic ways, 20 years down the line, we'll be much further toward having a repaired world.